Are you a graphic designer struggling to land your dream job? Have you been sending application after application but not getting a response? Or maybe you're a freelance designer that's been getting ghosted after you send your portfolio to potential clients. If any of those are hitting close to home, then you're gonna wanna stick around because today's video is all about helping you design a killer portfolio that gets you hired. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to Artful Ruckus. For those of you that are new here, my name is Tom Munns. I'm an art director with over 15 years of experience, and this channel is all about helping creatives just like you take your craft, careers, and confidence to the next level. I recently reviewed some of your graphic design portfolios where I did a deep dive talking about exactly what's going through my mind as a hiring manager. If you missed it, be sure to check out the link above because I revealed a ton of hacks and best practices to help you get hired. You guys sent in a lot more portfolios than I had anticipated, so today I'll be doing rapid fire reviews where I spend a minute or two on each and give you my gut reaction. And if you'd like to have your portfolio reviewed in a future episode, be sure to drop a link to your work in the comments and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. All right, I'm super excited to see the work you guys sent in. Let's get into it. All right, so for these, I'll be doing rapid fire reviews, meaning I'll spend one to two minutes on each portfolio, give you my honest gut reaction, and essentially going through it the same way that a hiring manager would. When you've got one or 200 portfolios to get through in a day, you can't spend 10 minutes on each, right? So a hiring manager is essentially spending 30, 60 seconds just getting a quick understanding of what you're capable of. And if they like what they see, they'll do a deeper dive. If they don't, they move on to the next one. So the first portfolio we're checking out is Clay Spawn. My initial reaction is that I like the typography you have here. It tells me that you understand the grid, you understand layout. I like that it's just one color on white. It feels very reserved, which is usually a good sign with these. I like that you have this intro here of who you are, what you do, what you like to focus on. You get right into the work, which is nice, so there's no beating around the bush. I can very quickly tell what you're all about, your skill set, start seeing some projects. It does look like these projects are maybe a lot of print focus projects, a lot of like zine looking projects, which is totally fine. But something to be mindful of is that the projects that you're showcasing and focusing on are the type of jobs that you're going to attract, right? So in this case, if you are looking for print jobs, and that's great because it seems like you're showing a lot of that, if I'm correct, that these are print pieces here. Um, if you're not looking for print work, then that's something to think about is making sure that your portfolio aligns with the clients that you're looking to attract. I really like this top project here. And this is really interesting. I would definitely click into this to see more about it. This rescue pack is the one that feels the most out of place with the rest of your work. Um, I think that's okay if you're showing a range, but it does just feel a bit odd compared to all the other ones. I like down here, you're giving us some more context, a bit of a deeper dive on yourself. So you gave us this quick mission statement then showed some work. And then if you keep scrolling, that's when you're giving them that extra context, that's a really smart way to approach that. And then you're giving us a mini resume here. So that's nice even working through some awards and then a contact, so that's great. So if I like everything that I see so far, I can jump right in contact you, download your resume. You have your phone number, your socials. So this is a really nice portfolio. You've hit all the key pieces. This is something that I would definitely add to my bookmarks folder and do a deeper dive on this one. So nice job. It's actually something I want to call out as well, mentioning that I would save this to my bookmarks folder. That's a, a real thing that I do. So as an art director, when I'm looking to hire talent, I basically create a folder. I just save resumes and portfolios that I like, that I think have potential. And even if I don't end up hiring those people, I keep that folder on my computer. So the next time I'm looking to hire someone or the next time I'm looking to hire a freelancer, that's my go-to. I just wanted to call that out that even if you don't get the job, if you leave a good impression, if you keep updating your resume, your portfolio, you'll definitely be in consideration the next time around. Or you even might get calls about freelance projects when the hiring manager needs an extra pair of hands on a big project. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so next up we have senses.hue. That's a cool name. I like that you've branded yourself and you have a, a nice minimal logo here. I will say it'd be nice to have your real name if you're applying to full-time positions, just so I can match up the resume to the portfolio. It would also be nice just to have a little bit more here. I like that you're kicking it off with your job role, but maybe just expanding this blurb a little bit with like a mission statement. Diving in a little bit deeper off the top would be nice. I like that you jump right into the work. You have attractive thumbnails here. And I see like some brand names with Lego, so that's a great way to kick things off. I like the typography and the American Palinka Club. Quickly take a look at one of these. 
So this is a nice hero image here where we're seeing the Legos in the background and the UI UX work as the hero. This is great that you're giving us some context. You're identifying the problem, the solution you created, and then results. So I love to see that. And then jumping straight into some user flows and UI work here. It would be nice to see more examples of this app in the real world. It looks like it's some sort of like warehouse type app. So maybe some images of people in the warehouse using it, just some beauty shots, just to make it a little bit more visually interesting and, and a bit more beautiful. Um, but overall, I think this is a really nice project. And yeah, I like the portfolio. It gives me a, a nice range. You have a good amount of projects here. So I would definitely be interested in, in doing a deeper dive on this one as well. So nice job. All right, so next off we have Frankie Hung. I love the script logo that you have here of your name. I'm not sure if that's a font or custom, but I like that the swoops carry from one letter to the next. So immediately I'm, I'm getting that you understand typography and maybe some logo design. So that's nice. It would be nice to include a, a mission statement here or an elevator pitch just off the top, just so I can get a really high level understanding of who you are and what you do. The work is very eye-catching. You've chosen some really nice mock-ups here. It's colorful. I will say there's no obvious way to contact you that I can see here on the homepage. That's something I would definitely add uh, maybe in the top right or even in the footer, just your email address, your phone number, your socials, however you prefer that potential clients get in contact with you, I would just make that really clear and easy to find. Jumping into a project here, you start off with context, which is always nice, as well as telling us the deliverables. These are beautiful mock-ups and pieces of artwork here, so I can see that you understand typography and composition and layout. I will say that this only having two images here is a little bit sparse, so I would work on building these out and treating them a bit more like case studies instead of just a couple of images, really build them out, create some more mock-ups, talk about the strategy, talk about the results. What sort of like tangible business results did you get? Do you have metrics? What can you actually show here from a, a results perspective? But yeah, first impressions, I can tell that you are a good designer. You understand composition typography. So those are the things that really I'm looking for off the bat. So I would definitely do a deeper dive on your portfolio as well. Nicely done. All right, next up we have Sam Stringer High. First impression, I really like this header you have here. You're very quickly establishing who you are, giving us a quick greeting so it's nice and friendly, talking about what you do, your approach to design. You're mixing playful creativity and practicality. So I like, I like that a lot that you've thought through what your mission statement is, what your elevator pitch is, what's your stance on design, right? So nicely done with that. You have some really nice thumbnails here. So I'm seeing a lot of apps and web. So I'm assuming that's obviously what you're in is more product design, web design. So that's great that you've picked a lane and you've really stuck with it and, and dove deep. I will say this Frontier app did take a few seconds to load. Maybe there's some optimization there to make it load a little bit faster, but it's a beautiful image to make you want to click into this. So great job with this mock-up here. I can tell that you understand typography with the contrast you have between the title font and your body font. It's very clean, easy to read. It entices me to want to keep scrolling to read more, walking us through each step with additional context, which is really nice. So you're telling that story. You've added some motion here. This is really nice. This animation's really clean. It's well optimized as well. So good job with that. I love these icons that you have here. Yeah, so that's a beautiful portfolio piece. You did a great job walking us through different steps and showing the app in different stages. So yeah, really impressed with your work, Sam. Love your portfolio, great job. All right, next up we have Andrew Gray. First off, this makes a, a really strong first impression. I can tell very much what your style is, right? It's this 50s atomic look that's reflected from this radio beacon badge logo you have and then the work. So that's really cool that you have a very clear style that you understand and you're leaning into that. So you're gonna attract clients that identify with that style of work. And that's really nice because then it makes projects easier when the client knows what to expect and you know what to expect. I would recommend a blurb about yourself here at the top, just talking about that elevator pitch that I keep reiterating. So that's one tweak I might make here. This eyeball animation is really cool. I like that you've added some motion. You've added some hover states here. Let's take a look at one of these projects. All right, so fire, medieval hot sauce. I like that you're starting off with your wins. So you're highlighting this one a few awards just to get you excited off the bat, knowing that this is an award-winning project. 
You're then giving us some context. This is cool. So it looks like maybe you did some, some copywriting, which I love to see that as well. You've really leaned into the medieval aesthetic. So I love that you're showing us this inspiration of all these medieval books. That's really cool to see. You then start showing us your concepts. I love to see that. So you're really telling that story from the very beginning. This is exactly where I came from, my inspiration. These are my early concepts. You can see the evolution of how it came from this beginning stage to where you ended up. You're then talking through your rationale of how you came up with the idea. That's really cool that you're, you have different flags here that animate. So it's not just a logo, it's like a living brand expanding out the entire brand system and showing how the different colors work and some mood boarding. This is really impressive. This is really well done. I can see that you understand not only design, but art direction and how to expand a project from a logo to a full brand. So I'm really impressed by this. Again, one of those key points, it's a bit of a nitpick, but maybe just have your email address or phone number easily found here. I'm assuming maybe you have it on your about page, but just having that as almost a call to action on your portfolio will probably convert a few more clients, just make it easier on them to get in touch. Great work, Andrew. I love the work. I love the style. You have a very clear direction of what your work looks like, and I really like to see that. So great job. All right, next up we have Holton Moats. That's a really cool animation that you have off the, off the top with your name being written out. I will say it's a little bit slow. I had to wait to see what your name actually was for a few seconds. So maybe speed that up just a tiny bit. Also, I might replace this image of yourself with a tiny elevator pitch here, just letting us know about your skill set and then maybe move this image to your about page. This is a great way to present the work. I love the amount of white space you have. I love that you're not trying to take up the full screen with huge images. So it shows that you understand restraint, you understand layout, white space. So I really like to see that. You have this contact me button here at the bottom. So you're making it easy for potential clients to get in touch with you. Let's take a look at one of your projects. So Pulse, you start us off with a little blurb here. And then we start getting into the work. You're showing some different layouts. This is a lot of different layouts and it doesn't look like there's a way to click in to enlarge them. So I would have a few more detail shots here that really blow up some of these layouts so I can see the work that went into them the amount of detail because right now it's really hard for me to actually see the typography and the grid and all that type of stuff. So definitely add some more detail shots here. And then another thing I like to call out is that instead of making me go back to the home page and scroll to the top to go to another project, just add an extra sub navigation here at the bottom of a project that just directs me to the next one, right? So say so click here to keep browsing more projects and that way I can just go through three or four of them really quickly instead of having to scroll back to the top go to the home page, scroll back down to the next project and then click in. So just a quick uh, UI UX call out there that'll help people stay on the website a bit longer. Overall, impressive portfolio, Holton. I really like what I saw. So again, I would definitely do a deeper dive on this one and, and save it to my bookmark. All right, next up, we've got Joshua Frederick. This is a great opening. It lets me know exactly who you are and what you do. It's obvious that you do book design. You've done a really nice job of carrying that throughout the design here where you're using the serif fonts and it just looks very much like the text you might see in a book. So that's a nice touch. This is a nice layout here where you have some beautiful mock-ups of the covers that you've designed. You're telling the story here. You're letting people jump into different areas of the website, whether they're not ready to buy yet, they want to see some more samples or they can look at services and just jump right into the buying process if they feel like they've seen enough. You're talking about not only do you do the covers, but the interiors as well. So that's another great piece of information for the potential clients to have. This is really cool that you've included this virtual book here. I will say it's not really obvious initially that you can actually scroll through this. So I might add some sort of call out here that this is actually a scrollable book because I think that's a really cool feature that a lot of people might be missing that just based on the scroll bar. I love that you've included a list of clients here. That's something I don't see on enough portfolio websites is a list of clients. It just adds a layer of social proof that if someone's hiring you, that you've already worked with other companies that they recognize. So that makes it a lot easier for them to decide to bring you on and work with you. You also have a testimonial here, which is another great way to build up that social proof. So great job with that. And then you keep the services going with book binding rebinding, and then you get into more calls to action. So this is a really nicely laid out portfolio that's not just showing off work, but it's actually built to sell. So that's something I don't see a lot where a lot of the times it's just, here's 10 projects, here's my email address, and that's it. But you've taken it a couple steps beyond that where not only are you showing the work, you're talking about what you do, 
but you're actually selling services, you're getting people to sign up for a newsletter, you're getting them to stay in touch with you. So that's really nice that you're not being passive with your portfolio, you're being very active and getting people to contact you. So nice job with that. Looking through some actual work here, I can see that you understand typography. It's cool that these different books have very different feelings, but it feels like you've mastered each of them. This one's obviously very old timey. And then you have this more modern art of beer design. So it's nice that you're showing off that range. So potential clients can feel comfortable hiring you no matter what their, their subject matter may be. You're interjecting even more social proof here. I love to see that. Now you're starting to tell the story of your approach to design. So this is really, really well done. Then getting into book interiors here, even getting into textbooks and children's books. So it's cool that you've divided them out by category. Even from an SEO perspective, I'm sure that's helpful to where people might just come here for one type of book. So yeah, awesome work, Joshua. I really don't have a ton of critiques. I think you've mastered the art of laying this out from a conversion standpoint and the work is beautiful, so love it. All right, next up we have Sebastian. I like that you start off with this mission statement here, talking about that you're into branding and brand management. It's a beautiful book. I'm not even sure if this is a photo or a mock-up, so that's always a nice thing to say. Your SD logo here becomes a little bit hard to see over the work, so maybe adding a low opacity top nav here might be a nice nice thing to do. I like that here in the bottom, you have your resume, you have your LinkedIn and contact, so it makes it very easy to reach out if I like what I see. Let's take a look at a project. So the project is loading pretty awkwardly and pretty slowly, so that's something I would definitely look at is making sure this is a lot more optimized. Maybe look at lazy loading some of these images, just because it definitely did take a long time for it to load and it loaded awkwardly where some images were in here on the right but on the left and it was just placeholder text, so something to optimize there. The work itself is beautiful. I love this cover. I like the art directed photos that you have here of someone actually holding the book. You're showing us some of the internal pages. I love this overlay of this monoline design here you have over photos. So you're showing us how this applies to marketing efforts, maybe social. I would probably take the context that you have here at the bottom. It's great that you have this, but I would put it at the top, right? So as I'm browsing all these different assets, it would be great for me to have the context of knowing who the client is, what the goal is. So in the back of my mind, I can check boxes going through the different assets to say, oh yeah, they accomplished these goals and it's obvious. Having it down at the bottom, it almost feels like it's too late and now I have to go back and look through the project again with the context in mind, if that makes sense. One thing to call out is that the work feels a little bit disjointed. So up here at the top, you have these very modern typography focused pieces. And then scrolling down this one, especially the shrimp sauce project feels out of place, I guess you could say, next to the other projects. So this one might be one that I would eliminate if you're looking to pare things down a little bit. There's not a lot of context here. There's not a lot of pieces and it doesn't really match up with the other portfolio pieces that you have. So this one feels like maybe it's one of your weaker pieces that might look into eliminating. Overall, Sebastian, very strong work. I really like what I saw with this Awaken project, so great job. All right, up next we have Clarissa. Love that you're starting us off with your elevator pitch. You have a very clear contact up here at the top. You have your socials, checking all the boxes as far as giving us that initial context, making it really easy for us to know who you are, how to get in contact with you. Looking at the actual work, I like that you've art directed all of your thumbnails to have this clean gray background, so that's nice to see. Looking at one of your projects here, the ability to scroll through a project is a nice touch. You even have some page scrolling uh, sound effects, that's pretty cool. This is great context here, talking about the project. I like the typography you have here. Then you have a, a call out subtitle here and then you start getting into the body text. You talk through your role and the tools used, which is really nice. I love that you're showing research here and some potential journey mapping. This is a really cool call out that you have talking about what your thought process was. I really like that. So instead of just telling us the problem, you're actually putting us into the first person point of view, which is a really nice way to draw us in. That's really cool. And I love to see behind the scenes and see concepting and your thought process. I will say this one in particular feels a little bit overly messy. I get that concepting isn't always perfect, but you might wanna maybe recreate this or make it look a little bit cleaner, just to sit a little bit nicer in the portfolio piece. I like seeing that you've thought through the color palette, so you've assigned different portions of this print piece to different colors. It looks very easy to read, so obviously you understand layout and typography and hierarchy. 
So I love to see that. Then even showing the app here, this video took quite a while to load and they actually didn't load. So that's something to, to definitely check out and fix, make sure this video works correctly. And then this is really nice here at the bottom where you're just leading us into other projects. So I love to see that. Nice work, Clarissa. I love the cleanliness of your portfolio. Just check on the video and clean up those couple of things. But I think this is, this is a great portfolio. All right, next up we have Shabib. My first thought is I would recommend getting a professional domain name. So just having shabib.myportfolio.com feels a little bit unprofessional. I would say just get like a real.com domain name if you can. It looks like you do a lot of digital illustration. I'll say out of these projects, this orange cat wine, the illustration feels like maybe it doesn't quite hold up to the other ones. So just an initial thought, something to look at might be updating this project in particular. Let's take a look at one of the projects. So this is a nice little animation showing off the color palette. This is a great way to start us off. So you're showing us the inspiration for the logo. That's really cool. Initially, like you obviously don't really get that if you don't have the context. So I think that's really important that you started with that. So great job with that. This mock-up feels a little bit fake, I would say. It's pretty obvious that that banner is not actually there. So you might want to look at getting a more photorealistic mock-up for this one. I feel like the concept is a little bit confusing to me. I feel like the logo is very organic, but then when we start seeing the art direction and the execution of it, it starts feeling a lot more EDM and clubby and it has this like neon duo tone. So that's a bit at odds to me where the logo and even this banner doesn't feel like it's from the same brand as these actual executions of the posters. So I want to look at bringing those a bit more in line with each other. So kind of the same thing as the banner, this lanyard mock-up, it's very obviously a mock-up. So I would find a more realistic lanyard mock-up to make this a bit more polished. This ticket is really nice. So yeah, I think this ticket mock-up is what you should be aiming for as far as realism and quality for these other mock-ups. And I think this will be in a good place. It would be nice if you just let us into more projects down here at the bottom so I don't have to go back to the top, go back to the homepage and keep browsing. Nice work, Shabib. I would just focus on cleaning up those mock-ups, making them a little bit more realistic and believable. But overall, great work. All right, next up we've got Steve Mudd. My initial reaction is that it's a bit stark. I like that it's minimal. I don't love like over-designed portfolios, but it would be nice to see a little bit more design here, maybe a bit more deliberate font choice, maybe a logo of some kind or a mark, and then adding some context as well with a mission statement or an elevator pitch. I do like that you have your contact right here at the top. From a work standpoint, this is a nice photo that you have here. See, so yeah, I think these are attractive projects. I think the animation on this social media piece could use a little bit of love. The animation of the B coming down isn't the smoothest necessarily. I would put some easing on it. Um, so maybe look at changing out the, the image that you're using for this project. Let's jump into this Fernway project here. So I would definitely recommend building this out as actual text. It looks like this is just like one big image. So it's awkward if I click into it and I have to go back to get to the, the portfolio piece. So I'd make all of this live text for sure. And it looks like some of these pieces are also pretty JPEG-y. So this one, this long banner in particular is getting really pixelated. So I'd look at that to make sure that they're all high quality. Same thing with this long banner here. So I'd either cut those or just make sure that they're high resolution. I also feel like this project in particular, like I like the Fernway typography. I'm not sure if that's a logo that you worked on, but the actual font here as far as the title font feels a little bit dated to me. So even if this was work for a client and that's their brand font in your portfolio, it might make sense to use a different, more modern font to design it the way that you would wanna see. So yeah, I like the simplicity that you have here. I love the images that you've chosen. Just make sure that it's live text, maybe add a bit more character to the portfolio overall. Nice work, Steve. All right, we've got Ryan Walker's portfolio. I like that you're just hitting us with the work off the top. It's big, it's bold, it's in your face. I'd be curious to see on a large screen if this is just full screen, it might be a little bit abrasive. So that's one danger of full width portfolios is if someone's using a 30 inch monitor, then it's very much in their face. Again, you guys know I'm a fan of starting off with a little elevator pitch about who you are and what you do. So jumping into a project here, I would like to see some more context at the top, talking about the client, who are they, talking about the project, talking about the problem that you were solving, talking about the results that you saw. 
talking about your role. So all those things I think are really helpful on all projects and just kick them off that way. Looking at the work here, so I would definitely make all this live text instead of an image. That's gonna help out with readability, with accessibility. It's gonna help out even with SEO. So definitely do that. I'll also say I'm, I'm scrolling down fairly far here and I still haven't seen any actual work that I can tell. It's mostly beauty images and things like that. So maybe getting into the work and concepting a little bit earlier would be better. I'm also not seeing a ton of continuity between these different banners you have here. I get that they're all holiday themes, so they're all a bit different. But as far as having an overarching thread throughout all of them, as far as common branding or some kind, um, I'm not really getting that. So that might be something to look at. I think for these images, um, these could be a little bit more high quality. They look like they might be iPhone photos, which is OK. But for a portfolio, you really want to sell it. You really want it to be beautiful, sexy images, right? So if you're able to, I might look at retaking those. Seeing the same thing here where these look like they're quicker iPhone photos. So art directing these a little bit more, making sure that the white balance is all set. This is also a really long project. So you might want to look at cutting some things and getting through it a little bit faster just because there are so many different parts that we're scrolling through to get to the end. And then coming down here to the bottom, it says that you didn't create a lot of the images seen in this piece. So that's a bit confusing to me that now I'm not sure what you actually worked on as far as the images I just saw. So you might want to cut the images that you didn't make and make your role a bit more clear. I love that you're directing us into more projects once we get to the bottom. So that's nice touch. I hope some of those tips are helpful, Ryan. Thanks so much for sending in the portfolio. Nicely done. All right, Nick Romano. I like this layout. This is very interesting. It's very different from most of what we see. So that's cool just to, to stand out and give me something different. It's very modular. It feels very app-like, so that makes sense that you're a designer and developer. I really like that you're calling out the different categories on each one of these project cards. So again, that's a tying back that you understand UI UX. In this uh, second mock-up here, this flame looks like it needs a little bit of love. It's a little bit fake. So I might take a look at a different mock-up for this candle project you have here. <laughs> I love that you called out frogging as a category on this one. So I like that you're adding some sense of humor to your projects. The actual script here of nature feels a bit dated to me. Kind of getting the same thing here where Explore Tarpon Springs, it just feels a little bit dated using these fonts and treatment. So. I might look at updating these to make them look a bit more modern. Jumping into a project here for Frosk Design Co. I like these colors, the magenta on the darker green. I really like the frog hand you have here as, a, as an icon that's really unique and fun. This is nice that this is actually like a PDF that you can click through of your brand guidelines. That's cool to kind of show that whole thought process and show that you really built this thing out. I will say it would be nice if it was the whole brand guidelines. It would also be nice to call this out. I just randomly clicked it, but I wasn't knowing that it was going to be interactive. So I might want to make that a little bit more obvious. For this typography here, I would probably either right or left align it. Having it centered just makes it a little bit hard to read body copy like this. There's a nice mock-up that you've used here. Same thing here where I think this text would be better served left aligned just to make it a bit more readable. I like these mock-ups that you've chosen. These are well art directed, so that's great to see. And then you carry us through to other projects. So great job there. I was curious with this view site, what that actually was. So it looks like this is your agency website, whereas the other one's your personal portfolio from what I can tell. I will say that this portfolio feels a lot more modern, a lot more interactive, better laid out. So you might want to replicate more of what you've done on this website on your personal portfolio website would be my recommendation. I love that you've got social proof and your capabilities. So. I think this website that you've built here is, is hitting on a lot of those key things that you should be replicating again on your personal site. Nice work, Nick. I love how unique this is. So nice portfolio. All right, next up we have, I believe, Ivan. It might be nice to just start off with a blurb. Like I keep saying, just because I have so many of these tabs open, I actually can't tell what your name is. As a hiring director, again, if I'm looking through 200 portfolios and you don't have a name on it, it makes it pretty hard for me to hunt and find and link this back to your resume. I like the simplicity of this layout. It's nice that it's all about the work and you're really showcasing the different brands and you have a very clean hover state. I like that you have six pieces here. So that's a nice, a nice number that doesn't show us too much, but it's not too little. You obviously have a very specific niche where you're working with sports brands. So that's great to see as well where you figured that out. So opening up a project here, it did take a little bit to load. I think that's okay because we started seeing it load in one by one. 
It would be nice to have a bit more context here because it looks like you have a ton of different projects, but just a tiny little blurb at the top. So it's it sounded like this was a full year's worth of work. So talking about what you achieved in that year, what results you saw, what were your key metrics, things like that, that would really help drive home the impact that you made with all these different assets. I like that you can tell that it's very clearly branded. So you did a great job of carrying the brand throughout all these different assets with your typography and your layouts. I can tell that you know how to take a brand and expand upon it and execute it for a lot of different assets, which is really important. So that's great to showcase. Nice work, Ivan. Again, I might just add a little bit more context to both your projects and your homepage, but I think this is a nice, nice portfolio. All right, next up, we've got Zach Bynes Designs. I really like your logo. This is very interesting and unique, a little grungy. So it's definitely different than a lot of the logos that you tend to see these days are usually very simple and modern. So I like that you're owning that and you're standing out. I like just initially in these first few pieces, we're seeing a lot of emphasis on typography. I would definitely recommend switching out the thumbnail for this project because it's very hard to tell what this is. It looks like it's some sort of like dragon with a shield, but just so zoomed in, it's really tough to see. Kind of the same thing here. I'm not sure what this project is all about. It's a bit chaotic, so it might look at a different thumbnail for that one as well. And then you've got a lot of work here, so I might Try to trim this down to about six, seven projects. So I'll look at these, figure out what your strongest projects are and what your weakest ones are, and maybe cut a couple of those. Opening up a project here. So it's nice that you're giving us this context off the top, but it's pretty hard to read being all uppercase, bold, BBOS or whatever it is. So I would definitely recommend using a sentence case body font for large bodies of text. Um, and then also probably not having it center aligned just because all those things are making it pretty difficult to read this amount of text. So it looks like these are posters and social posts and things like that. So for these posters, they're pretty huge. So it's a little bit difficult for me to, to see them all in one go. They might include some detail shots alongside a zoomed out shot of the whole poster, just so I can get a more zoomed out and a detailed version. As far as typography in these, it feels like there's a ton of fonts happening here where you have the Boys Like Girls logo, which already has a couple of different weights. Then you have Southeast Asia in this graffiti font. You have Spring Tour in this like condensed sans serif. Then you have this all undercased, spaced out city country sans serif. Then you have all these different logos. So for this piece, it just feels like you have a ton of fonts. And usually I like to aim for, let's say three fonts for a piece like this. You might want to look at maybe redesigning these and toning down the number of fonts you're using a little bit to make it look a bit more um, reserved in that respect. And then down here, we're seeing even more fonts as well, right? We're seeing this really thick, squished version that you're using on these dates. We're seeing this more thin, modern one up here at the top. So definitely create a style guide for these where you're only using three fonts and then use that throughout all of the different pieces. And that'll show that you understand the brand and you're carrying that throughout all the different pieces. Whereas right now it feels like each poster, each social post, you started from scratch and started using different fonts for whatever felt right for that particular piece. It would also be nice to show off some actual results here. For this being like social media ads and things like that, it'd be great to show off some results as far as these are the click throughs we got. This is the engagement, the amount of likes. Those metrics are really important to show that this design was that was working correctly. So yeah, Zach, I love the logo. I love that you have a perspective with this more grungy look. But as far as the portfolio, I might tone down the number of projects to get it to around six and then look at the typography and the actual projects themselves to make sure that you're establishing a style guide and sticking to it. Next up, we have Jade. This animation is a really fun way to start things off. I really like that it's eye catching. You talk us through your elevator pitch. It's really unique that you have these little toolbars on the side and it changes your cursor to the J in your logo, I believe. That might be something to look at that your navigation took quite a while to load. So I was pretty confused when I opened up your hamburger navigation and nothing popped up for a minute there. This is fun that you have it broken down into work, play and about. So I do like that. This crop on your face isn't the most flattering, just seeing your teeth. So you might want to um, recrop that. I'm not sure if this is maybe responsive to where it's cropping it differently based on device, but here on my desktop, it, it could probably be recropped. I also think up here in the top right, this being a plus is a little confusing from a UI UX standpoint. Usually to close a hamburger menu, it would be like an arrow or an X. 
So the plus made me think maybe something else was gonna open, but that's actually the close. I like that you're using a cursive font here. That's definitely something that's different from a lot of portfolios. For the body, I'll say here on the left, made with love by Jade, which is a really nice touch, but that's in a very modern uh, sans serif. But then here your body text is still in the cursive serif looking font. You might want to look at bringing those in line just to make sure that everything's in line with each other. And then here we're seeing those two things as well, where it's a more old style serif and then the sans serif. I might just pick a direction and go with it because I personally don't love having these two fonts competing with one another rather than working in tandem. So opening up this project, it still hasn't loaded. I'm not sure, okay, there we go. So this took about eight to 10 seconds for it to load. So that's way too long. I would definitely look at optimizing this image to make sure that they load really quickly so way people don't think that the website is broken. I like that you have these callouts here talking about what tools you used and what project it is. Love that you're starting us off with some context here and then showing some far shots and then getting into more detailed shots. So this is really cool that you've created a video to show the book in motion so you can see how the pages interact and fold and things like that. So that's a really, a really nice touch and really smart to include. I think rather than using a YouTube link, this could be a GIF or just an auto playing video that's self-hosted. That would make it nicer to where I don't have to like click play and wait for it to load, but it just automatically starts playing. That would be another nice UI UX improvement there. And then down here in the footer, I love that you have your email nice and big so I know how to get in contact with you. You even have this little star animation that really draws your eye to it, so that's really nice. Say hi, don't bite. I like that you're adding some humor, showing some personality. I will say here in the bottom left, I'm not quite sure what this illustration is of. So to me, it's a little bit confusing, but maybe I'm taking another look at that and making a little bit clear what that illustration is. But yeah, I love the amount of character you have here. I like that it's a bit different than a lot of the portfolios that we've been looking at. It definitely stands out. And so that's great to be memorable. So nice work, Jade. All right, so we've got Ariel Thomas here. Looks like you're using a Behance portfolio. That's something that I think it's fine to use Behance, but I think a problem that Behance portfolios often run into is that the more you post, the more portfolio pieces you have, and they likely aren't all the strongest because you're gonna get better over time. So by nature, Behance is showing older projects that aren't your best. So. That is a reason I don't like using Behance for my actual portfolio. In my opinion, Behance is a bit better as like a design social network to find clients to get work, but I would recommend creating an actual standalone website where you can curate things a little bit better for your real portfolio. Another thing with that too is that you can have your own domain name. It looks a little bit more professional. So another benefit to, to creating a standalone portfolio site. As far as the actual work goes, it looks like you do a lot of digital illustration. So it's nice that you have a clear niche that you're in. I will say this Fix My AC rebrand definitely feels like it's standing out as not matching the rest of the work. So again, on Behance, that's a problem where you can't curate it as much, right? So you have this really well curated feed of illustrations and then you have a couple of odds and ends in there that just don't quite match. So I like that you're starting us off with concepts and your ideation. I will say that it feels a bit messy. I'm not exactly sure what to look at first here. So you might wanna look at breaking this down into more of a story where you take us through each step one by one instead of putting it all on one big canvas and it, it ends up being a bit messy and confusing. So here we're seeing you do that where you're breaking it down one, two, three. So yeah, this is nice where you're showing the concept sketch and then the actual execution of the final asset. I do think this could be cleaned up a little bit where the illustration's a little bit messy. The typography feels a little bit stretched. The font feels a little bit dated. So maybe using a bit more of a modern font, making sure that it's not getting stretched on the, the circle the type path there. And I think we're seeing a lot of those same things down here as well, right? Where like a messier illustration, a messier handwriting. I get that you're going for that vibe, but I think this middle piece is very successful in executing that where it's messy, but it still feels refined. Whereas here on the left and the right, it doesn't feel as refined. So taking this ethos and applying it to all the illustrations, I think would be a big help. And then down here, these mock-ups could also use a little bit of love. They feel a little bit flat, especially the drop shadows all being one opacity and, and distance. So using more realistic mock-ups, I think would help out a lot. I think you're starting to do that here with these angled mock-ups. These feel a lot better than 
these mock-ups here on the right. So nice work, Ariel. I love the illustrations. I would recommend getting a standalone portfolio website, telling us a bit more of story at the beginning, and then curating the work down to probably about six projects. All right, Yash. So I see we have another Behance portfolio here. Again, I think having a standalone portfolio on your own website is definitely a lot more professional, a lot more powerful, and it gives you a lot more control. Coming down to your projects, it seems like you don't have a ton of work up here, so you might want to look into adding a couple more projects. As far as your thumbnails go, it would be great for this one to feature some design work. With this just being a photo, I'm not exactly sure off the bat what your involvement was from a design standpoint. Clicking into a project here, starting off with some context, which is very nice. I'll say that you have context here as live text, but then you're adding more as part of this image, so you might want to remove this part and just make this all one intro text so it's all in one place instead of having two intros basically. This is pretty cool that you've added a 3D model here so that's a nice touch that you don't see on a ton of portfolios. The 3D model itself is a little bit rudimentary just being a rectangle, right? So it honestly might be more impactful if you actually did some really nice mock-ups here of the box from different angles with some depth of field. I think that might be more impactful than this 3D, as cool of an idea as it is, I'm not sure it's having the, the impact that you might hope. Coming down to the Instagram ads, it's nice that these are animated, definitely visually interesting. I will say having a ton of them all in one place makes it pretty difficult to appreciate the animation because it's all happening at once. It's a little bit distracting, so you might want to just feature two or three of these animated posts, whichever ones you think are the most attractive, the most impactful, instead of having so many. And the same thing down here, this is a ton of Instagram posts. So maybe you just do one really zoomed out grid where you show off these at a high level, but I would look at toning this down and just focusing on the Instagram posts that you think are the most impactful, presenting them in a really nice professional way, maybe on some phone mockups, things like that. Here, I think you're showing too much work. So I definitely dial it back and focus more on quality instead of on quantity. This is a nice pop-up on Behance. I haven't noticed, it's been a while since I've been on Behance, but this little available for hire pop-up that's happening, that's a nice touch to where they can just get in touch with you immediately and it's a great call to action. So that's a pretty cool feature there. Moving on to Igor, I hope I'm saying that correctly. We're seeing another Behance portfolio. So again, I think putting this on your own domain name, on your own custom website would be more impactful, more professional. Looking at the work here, you have a ton of work. So again, another issue with Behance where for an actual portfolio, I would say this is way too much work, right? You want to focus on six to eight really high quality, really dialed in projects where this is a lot of projects and it looks like these are maybe even photo dumps of more projects within them. So I would definitely look at creating your own standalone portfolio and really dialing this back Right now you've gone really, really wide and I would say go deeper on a few really high quality projects. And then here we're seeing that even one of these looks like the image is broken. So again, just cleaning this up, making sure they're all your best work and it's really curated. So I know exactly what to look at and get a good idea for what you do. Looking at this candle project, these mock-ups are pretty nice. I like all the smoke here. This is nice they're showing off the different lockups of the logo you have here. So I like that you thought through all of that. This is fun that you're using the, um, what looks like the Fortnite text for the brand text here. So I know this, you mentioned this is a gaming candle. So that's a nice tie in. These are nice mock-ups here of little like wristbands or tickets and stickers. These images are cool. Like I like the label designs and I like that you have photography. The fact that they're not all art directed in the same way is a little bit problematic where you have like zoomed in shots on a dark background, you have zoomed out shots on a white background, you have wood, you have images in people's homes. So having all these images be really well art directed on the same backdrop from different angles, but showing off the different labels, that would make it look a lot more professional. I think it would come across a lot better in a portfolio. So that's something to think about there. And then the same thing here, we're seeing some daylight shots, some nighttime shots. The lighting is different. So again, just art directing these, making sure the mock-ups all look the same, that the photography all looks the same. Now we're seeing that again down here where these are very like staticky, grainy shots, which is cool with these scribble lines. So that's very stylized, which I like that, but that's not necessarily 
carried on throughout the rest of this where these are very clean and very vibrant and there's no grain. So just keeping things consistent there. And then down here, this is getting a little bit confusing where we're going from candles to apparel. So adding some more context right here about why we're now seeing apparel, talking about how they expanded from candles to doing t-shirts and things like that as well would be helpful. Just cause without that context, it almost feels like we're just on a completely different project right now. So that's a little bit jarring. And then now we're getting into packaging. I don't love saying and stuff here. It feels a little bit unprofessional. I get that this is like a gaming brand, but as a client, I don't know if I would love that. And then we're seeing merch bags and things like that. So this is cool that you have all this. It does feel like a lot. So I might dial this back a little bit. I would add some more context about why we're seeing different things at different times, just cause this is a very long project to not really have that context along the way. I would definitely recommend doing some more storytelling. Next up, we've got Cameron Nettles. So this is very eye-catching for sure. When you come here, you have this animation playing in the background. It does look like it skips, so it's not a perfect loop. So that's something that I would definitely recommend is making sure if you're gonna have an animation like this, make sure it loops perfectly. Otherwise, it's pretty jarring when you see that break in the animation. This title font you're using is pretty difficult to read, where the thins are so thin that this almost looks like a C instead of an E. So you might want to look at using a different font here that has the same vibe, but maybe is a little bit more legible because that's definitely an accessibility concern. So here I like that you have a blurb about yourself. I will say having it be this wide makes it a little bit difficult to read. It might be better to add some margins here to make this a little bit less wide, a little bit more tall from a typography standpoint. I would also recommend adding your logo up here in the top left of your navigation just to give us a nice escape hatch. Down here you have another about section, so that's a little bit confusing where you have this intro, which presumably would be about you, and then you have another about section. So maybe combining those two together so you're not using up more valuable screen real estate here. And then you're talking through, it looks like your process. So this is nice, but I probably wouldn't have it this high up on your homepage. Once people see the work and they know they like it, that's when they wanna know what your process is. They don't really want that up front necessarily because at this point they don't even know if they wanna work with you, right? Coming down to your portfolio, starting off with just like this big black YouTube page here is not a great first impression. Maybe self-hosting this video and adding a poster frame to it to where it's like a nice beautiful image. So yeah, this is cool. This is your demo reel, seeing that you're a motion designer. So yeah, I would probably put this above your about section, self-host it, make it have a poster frame, and just let people start off with this to really understand your skill set. Coming down beneath that, this gap between the reel and this work is a little bit odd. I would probably add a title here if this is a different section or bring these closer together. These mock-ups are nice. They are all a little bit same samey, right? So that really makes it obvious that they're fake. So you might want to look into using different angles or different mock-ups for these thumbnails just to make it feel a bit more believable, a bit more realistic. It's also odd that I can't click into any of these projects, or I guess you actually can, but they're broken pages, so definitely look into that to make sure that these are linking to projects where I can learn more about each project. And then down here, I'm assuming these are probably people that you've worked with, so I would add some context there as well, just say like past clients, and then probably make these logos smaller as well, maybe just stack six of them in a horizontal row. Right now, these feel like really big and in your face, so I'd probably scale those down. It's nice that you have a contact down here. I would also just add your email and a footer as well, just to make it really easy to contact you if I don't want to use this form for whatever reason. So yeah, nice site. I like how original it is. I would just clean up the UI UX a bit, clean up this video in the background, move the about probably towards the bottom of the page, put your demo reel at the top and make sure it has a, a pretty poster frame. Next up, we've got Jason Camardi. Off the top, I would definitely add your name up here in the navigation, just so it's really easy for me to know who you are while I'm looking at your portfolio. Add that mission statement, your elevator pitch here at the top. Um, it looks like you only have four projects, so I would definitely look at expanding that to about six to eight. So clicking into one of these projects, it's great that you have context and you're telling a story, but this is a ton of text to start off with, right? So I would look into starting off with two to three sentences about the overview, then show us some work, and then tell us the mission statement and values, then show some more work, 
then talk about the issues you encountered along the way. So break it up piece by piece instead of this huge text wall, really telling us that story and walking us through the project from concept to completion. From a work standpoint, it feels a little bit sparse here. It's like you have more text than you actually have design work. I would look into adding some more mock-ups. I like this hard hat and the building. Those are really nice, so keep going with it, right? Add some more mock-ups, look at ways to make this logo really come to life because it's a nice logo and you're heading in the right direction. You just need to spend a bit more time, I think, fleshing it out. All right, next up we have Nursena. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, first off, this makes a great first impression. It's very different. I like how stark it is. It's interesting that you have available up here. So I guess people can know when you're available for freelance projects. Unless you're super busy and backed up a lot of the time, that might be a little bit odd if it just says always available, but that's a cool touch. It's nice that this project is just like so big and in your face. I will say that if this is a full width website and someone's on a huge monitor, it might be a little bit aggressive to have this just take up the entire screen. Another thing here, I'm not sure it's adding a ton is this copyright in the bottom right. First off, it's the wrong year. So I would say if you're gonna have that, definitely make sure it's showing 2024. I'm not sure it's adding a ton being there as it is. The work looks nice. One thing I'm seeing here with these huge images is that on my screen, this is starting to get a little bit blurry, it looks like. I'm not sure if these images are being upscaled to fit that full width container, so that's something to think about. This is a really nice project here. So this has a ton of character, it has some really nice typography. I love the colors, it's very modern. So this project to me might go in the top slot because this is really popping out to me. Whereas this one, for instance, isn't doing as much for me. You can tell these clips are fake. So this mock-up can maybe be switched up a little bit to be uh, more realistic. The same thing with these t-shirts here. So I think you maybe have your work in the wrong order where I would put this project at the top for sure. This looks like another nice project. So, and this, and this one as well. So it feels like you have your best work at the bottom of your portfolio. I would make sure that you're putting the most attractive work at the top and then potentially even paring things down as well. If you think you maybe have one or two too many projects, I think you might be able to eliminate some that way as well. Coming into a project here, I'll say the kerning on this text is really wide, even for the body font. So I might tighten up the kerning on the, the body font here to make it a little bit easier to read. I like that you're starting us off with a lot of context. I love the stats here. That's something that a lot more people need to be doing. So great job there. And again, this is a beautiful project. I love the typography. This is a ton of fun. The colors are really nice. This is great that you have some animation here. This is a really nice style guide and you've laid it all out. So yeah, this is a beautiful project. So I would definitely put this at the top of your, your portfolio. Nice work, maybe just reorder some things there. All right, next up we've got Zachariah. Love that you're starting off with a quick little blurb about yourself. One thing is look at the capitalization here where you've got your last name lowercase. You might also want to add a bit more spacing between the lines. This is a little bit tough to read with how tightly blind space it is. Looking at the work, having it all be black and white is challenging to where nothing really pops off the page, everything's bland. So I might recommend using the full color version as the non-hover state and then using the black and white version as the hover state just to keep it a bit more interesting. It's also a bit odd that this overlay doesn't cover the whole card. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or on purpose, but it looks a bit unfinished in that regard. Hopping into a project here, I'm not sure you need it to say welcome. I'd probably use that screen real estate to say something a bit more impactful. This also just feels like a lot of white space here. So maybe tightening that up or adding a big full width background image here would be more impactful. This is nice. You're giving us an intro and some context. It does feel like a good bit of context to start us off. So maybe breaking this up into different pieces as we walk throughout the portfolio piece would be a bit more digestible. And then just making sure things are consistent. So here you have a colon, here you don't have a colon, here you have a colon, but with a space in between it. So just making sure that you have a, a style guide for how the titles look and how the body copy looks and making sure that's copied throughout. So I like that you're walking us through the inspiration of where the ideas came for the logo, 
showing us the color palette and the typography. That's nice. This is a pretty cool mock-up here where you've put like a fountain inside of the bottle. I would look at just tightening things up a little bit, telling the story throughout more piece by piece instead of all at once. And then yeah, back on the homepage, tightening up the typography a bit, making sure that your hover states work correctly. And yeah, nice work. Next up, we've got Ben McDaniel. My first reaction is that this image here is very small for how large the slider is. It looks like you're telling us what you made this image in. I'm not sure that's super relevant. Telling us you made an Adobe Illustrator is pretty inside baseball, I guess you could say. I'm not sure clients really care what program you use to create things in. Initially, my first thought is to make it less about these different programs of InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, make it more about the work, make it more about the clients, things like that. As far as your hover states go, it looks like it's all white on white. From a UI UX perspective, I would definitely change that to where these don't get lost when you hover over your different nav items. For your Instagram feed, it looks like you do a lot of like sketching and coloring and watercolor and stuff like that. So that's really cool. I'm not sure if that's the type of clientele that you're going after professionally. So if it's not, I would probably recommend removing the Instagram feed. And yeah, overall the work feels a bit dated, I would say. Like this header up here saying Illustrator and this big gray box feels out of place to me. Some of the font choices and things like that feel a bit dated. So I would pare this down and just showcase Again, six to eight projects through the entire website. Remove the delineation of the different programs you use to create it and really focus on your best projects. Focus on showcasing them in the best light possible. Put them on some really nice looking mock-ups um, and tell the story from concept to completion. Because right now when you click into these, it's just the image with no context. So I don't know what these are for. What was the client? What was the brief? Did you solve a problem? What results did you get? So I definitely recommend building these out into more case studies rather than just images because they're not super impactful just as images. All right, so next up we have Lauren Jones. So my first impression is that your logo is a little hard to read with the L and the J, I see it, but without knowing your name is Lauren Jones, it makes it a little tough to decipher. Looks like you have a pretty large selection of projects here. I generally like what I'm seeing clicking into one of these projects. This is a really nice hero image. I like these 3D trees. This is like a really fun layout you have going on here. This typography is pretty tough to read. Some of the lines here are a bit inconsistent with how clean they are versus bumpy. That might be something to clean up. I like these custom images you have here in the woods. These are really fun. This is really nice. I love the Bigfoot hand here. That's really funny. This is nice that you have like these topography lines as a background element. This is a really nice project. I like the art directed photos. I like how you're showing what the game is and how it works and kids interacting with it. I like the Bigfoot icon here. So this is really nice. You should have a lot of attention to detail. I think up at the top, you could use a bit more context talking through what it is, what game it is. Just so that way as we're looking through, we have that mindset as we look through each piece. I can tell you're a talented designer, just even looking at that Sasquatch project, I would say maybe look at the number of projects you have in Behance slim it down a bit. Again, six to eight is probably that sweet spot. This can project here, just looking at thumbnails is the one that looks the weakest to me. So just something to consider there. All right, next up we have Paula Arif. My initial thought is I really like your mock-ups you have here. I like that you have these flat colors in the background. It really helps each project to be set apart, but also unifies them as well. As we've touched on with a lot of these other portfolios, you don't really have a mission statement or anything at the top here that really tells me who you are, what you do. So that would be nice. So I don't have to go to the about me page, taking a look at one of these projects here, the Pokemon Legends project. This is really fun that you've put them into these holding shapes that replicate uh, like an in-game menu and you even have these little animations. I really like that. I love that you have these auto animate, so they auto play instead of me having to sit here and click into each video. So that's a nice touch. I love that you've color coded this whole thought process of the UI UX of this. Sometimes with these, they can get a little bit dry. They're usually just gray and white and black. So adding the color really makes it more visually interesting and it lets me very quickly understand what's going on. So nice job with that. I love this behind the scenes where you actually like printed things out and uh, tested them in real life. That's really cool. And I can see here you've really thought through each of the paths and then you did some like low fidelity wireframes here and then showing how that became the high fidelity. So you're doing a great job of telling the story and walking us through each step. So yeah, nice project. 
Again, here at the bottom, it'd be great if you just let us into the next project here. But yeah, I love your creative presentation. I like your information hierarchy, really strong work. All right, next up we have Delaney. Up here at the top, it looks like your SSL maybe isn't activated, so that's one thing to look at. Having an active SSL certificate will help you in rankings and just makes your site a bit more professional and trustworthy. I'm a little confused by the title of Creative Director Designer. I guess maybe that means you're a creative director, but you're still active as far as hands-on. It's great that you do start off with this blurb though, just to give us that context. Looking at your projects here, I'm seeing a lot of out-of-home advertising, so it's nice that you have that niche. Overall, uh, the visuals are really strong. I love these mock-ups. This is some really nice custom illustration here. So clicking into a project, the page does take a little bit to load. It looks like this is just like one huge hero image. So make sure that's like a optimized JPEG that it's been squished appropriately for the web. It's nice to give us a little bit of context here, maybe a little bit more present the problem and the potential solutions. I like this a large color palette here, it sets the tone of the whole project. Okay, so you do list the challenge right after that. So that's nice that you're giving us that near the top here. Some really nice typography. I like that it's animated. You're showing us the title case versus body copy. This is really nice. I assume these are custom illustrations for icons. These look great. And again, you're giving us those chunk down bite-sized pieces of information to tell that story as we go through the whole project. This animation here seems really fast for a website scroll, so you might want to slow that down a little bit. The speed it is right now, it's getting lost in the middle of the website, so something to consider there. Yeah, this is a really clean project. I. It's obvious that you understand telling the story and walking us through the different steps. You showed a really complete breakdown of different pieces here. Something nitpicking here at the bottom, we can see that these Instagram posts aren't spaced quite evenly, so something small to clean up there. I like that you're leading us into projects down here at the bottom so we can just keep on going. That's really nice. So yeah, I can tell you have a great understanding of design and a great eye. So nice work. All right, next up we have Mircha. I hope I'm saying that correctly. So I'm generally not a huge fan personally of like these large dumps of branding and social media. Just personally, I like seeing process. I like seeing strategy. I like more case study approaches when I'm looking at a, at a project. So we can actually take a look at one of those here in a second, but that's just a personal preference I have. Sometimes with the dumps, it just feels like a bunch of photos without context, which just makes the design all about visuals instead of strategy. It looks like one of these projects is maybe broken. Is that something to look at? And then down here, it looks like you have some photography. I'm personally a fan of breaking those up into different portfolios instead of having your photography and design all in one. I like that you have a motif here of these borders with rounded edges for a lot of the different projects. So that's a nice way to unify them together. All right, let's take a look at your branding project here. So this is just a, a logo dump, I'm assuming. I like this one a lot. That has a lot of character to like the side of the face. It's nice that it's just half of it, the shadow side. Really nice typography with the custom A here. This is fun with like the, the glass of wine and the O. I bet this little shadow in the bottom left here is gonna get lost at small sizes. Something to think about there, but love this background image. I'm not quite sure of the symbolism on this one. That one's a bit lost on me there. This is fun as well with a coffee cup and you get the coffee bean with the steam coming off of it. So that's a really clever device. This is a really nice mark here. It gives me like a Bauhaus feeling. I assume this is like some gate or something like that, but um, really clean work there. This one feels a little bit funky to me. It seems like a bunch of shapes that are off kilter a little bit. I'm not sure if that's intended or what the, the meaning is there. So that's what I was alluding to before where without context, just in a logo dump, maybe that's intentional that this logo is a little bit wonky, but without that context, I don't know that. And it just looks like a mistake. So you might want to think about taking the two or three best logos you have here and making full on case studies with mockups and showing how the brand could live outside of just the logo. And then talking about the design decisions that you made and why they look the way that they do. So yeah, this is nice work. But again, when you show this amount of work, there's bound to be some that don't measure up to the others. So that's another downside to these large logo dumps is on a portfolio. Again, it's all about curating. It's all about showing only the best work because a portfolio is only as good as the worst piece. All right, next up we have Noel McPhail. So from a logo standpoint, this J Sick Studios feels like it needs a little bit of love. The typography here is not 
super strong and it's pretty busy for a logo. So this one's not doing a lot for me. The same thing with every Bloomin' Thing rebrand here. It's a little bit busy for a logo. So for logos, you wanna make sure they're very simple, that they work at all sizes. So for example, this J6 Studios, if you made this really small, I think it's gonna start having problems being replicated for example, a social profile or something like that. So something to think about from a logo design standpoint, just to make sure that they're working at all sizes. I really like these last two projects here. These are really nice thumbnails. This calendar is showing some really nice typography and colors. So to me, just looking at thumbnails, these last two seem like your two strongest projects. So you might want to consider moving those to the top and maybe removing one or two of these other ones that you feel like might not be as strong. Clicking into this calendar design, it's nice they're giving us a little bit of context up here. Could probably use a little bit more. Looking at the photos, I would say make sure that your white balance is set the same. So we can see here on the left, the white balance is set to be really close to like a, a true white. And then here on the right, it's more of like a taupe or something like that. And then we're getting an orange. So art directing these photos to make sure that they all look very consistent from one photo shoot, same time of day. That's one way to make these look a lot more professional. And then I would get some really nice like depth of field close up shots of this stuff as well, like show off the really fine details. I think this could do with a few more photos. All right, and last but not least, we have Grayson Garrett. So just off the bat, it looks like a lot of sports focused pieces, which is nice that you have a niche that you've worked in. It does look like you've expanded beyond that, but that seems to be the the main theme that I'm seeing here. So it looks like each of these is just a single image. So that's something I would definitely say is that rather than just having these be a single image, make this into a case study, right? So choose your six best, break them out into case studies, give us some context about what this logo is for, why did you make the design decisions that you did, um, what was the problem that you were solving and what results did you see? And then walk us through each step of that. Whenever I'm just looking at a logo, I can tell that you understand how to use Illustrator. This has some nice typography, but without the context, it's hard for me to really understand who you are as a designer, right? For this one, it's really busy from a typography standpoint. So that's another tip is maybe dial that back for a few of these where on this one, it looks like you have four or five different fonts going on. So I would limit that probably to three different type treatments and that would help make it look a bit cleaner. And as we've talked about on a lot of these, make sure that you have your elevator pitch at the top. Make sure that you have an email at the bottom. Just make it really easy for me to get in touch with you. But overall, nice work. All right, I hope you're able to take some of these tips to apply them to your own design portfolio to land that dream job or your next big client. Let me know in the comments if you liked this format and be sure to drop a link to your work in the comments as well if you'd like me to review your portfolio in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Now go out there and make a ruckus. <laughs>